everybody. Thanks for joining Game Trade Media at Alliance Open House. I'm Gretchen, and I'm here with Jeff from Amigo Games. Hi, Gretchen. All right, so you have games to show us. I do have games to show you, but first I want to tell you just a teeny little about the company. So Amigo has been around for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's Germany's number four game company. Actually, I think we're number three, but... We're not exactly sure, and we're a little bit modest. Anyway, <laughs> um, and so we launched the U.S. subsidiary here in the U.S. about a year and a half ago. So we've been in business here for a year and a half, even though some of our games and some titles you might recognize have been in the market for longer than that. So we'll talk about a couple of those when mm -hmm. they come up. Um, in the meantime, though, we have two distinct parts of our line. The first part is what we're going to concentrate on now, which is our strategy and hobby games. But we also have a kids and family section. The kids and family section, I had the pleasure of going through an 1,000-game archive <laughs> to pick out the 20 titles I thought were the best for the U.S. market and Canada too. <laughs> and I thought that there were, there were three yeah. things that mattered, three mm -hmm. criteria that I used. The first one is every game we have has five rules or less. So I could teach you how to play in 30 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. You could teach your customers how to play in 30 seconds or less. Families can start playing right away. So that's number one. Number two, they all have European quality. That's in terms of the components. So we use rounded corners on the cards, mm -hmm. thicker stock, linen finish, all of those details matter to us. Mm -hmm. But we also have European quality in terms of the gameplay as well, even though they're simple to learn. And number three, with a couple of exceptions, this is one of them, everything retails for $20 and under. So that was the That's goal awesome. to try and put something together that would be a great family and kids offering, supplemented by some of the titles that people might know and recognize. Do you want me to jump into the first yeah, one? Yeah, let's jump let's in. Jump. I'm excited. All right. I'm eyeballing it. I'm like, so oh, it looks nice. Congratulations, Gretchen. You have been nominated for there's one spot left in the Royal Monstrological Society for this year. Okay? Yeah. We're about to talk about Richard Garfield's Carnival of Monsters, <laughs> and you are going to have the opportunity, if you're willing to play the whole way through. How much time do we have? No, I'm just <laughs> um, If you play the whole way through, you'd have the chance mm -hmm. to get that slot. So all the players are competing to capture the oh. best set of exotic monsters that they can That's then present fun. at the annual meeting of the Royal Monstrological Society so they can get that one slot that's left. Okay? Right. So as you can see, it comes with lots of goodies in here. Um, the key to the game is these right here, which are our monster cards. So this is what we're trying to collect. Look at the artwork on these. It's really pretty, isn't it? Let me hold one of those up for the camera so you can see it. Um, that's just one example. The neat thing about this is there are seven different artists that worked on this. Some of the ones wow. were, were original artists who worked on Magic the Gathering with Richard Garfield many years ago. <laughs> um, but each artist illustrated a different set of monsters because the way the game works is you're visiting different lands to do that. So you have a land card to start. Okay. You have eight cards in your hand. And on each turn, you're going to draft and play. So it's a little bit different than most drafting games because you're going you're gonna to pick a card from your hand, keep it, and pass your seven cards that are left on to the next player. You then have to figure out, do I want to play that card in this round or wait? Mm. Right. One of the reasons to play would be because there's a penalty. You have to pay money <laughs> if you want to hold on to that monster or that, excuse me, that card for mm -hmm. longer. Uh, on the other hand, um, you don't want to reveal information. So each turn, you've got to figure that out. We draft eight times till all the cards are out. That round then ends. We move on to a different season. There are four seasons because, as I mentioned, you have one year to pull together all the monsters. And uh, at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. There are a couple of other neat twists. The first one is that in addition to capturing the monsters, you're also trying to collect these lands because this land has a one. This monster has a three. Guess what? That's not enough points to do it. So you're going to have to build up oh lands no. as well. Another challenge is that some of these monsters are a little bit dangerous. So you may have to hire help to help you keep those monsters in line. Each of these folks has a different set of skills that can help, but they also help in case these monsters escape to corral them back in so you don't maim your public before you get the chance to show them Probably the beautiful monsters that you... hurt your chances exactly, of joining Exactly, that would anything. definitely <laughs> hurt your chances of joining anything. You may get some help from the Royal Hunters mm. along the way. There's a lot of intricacy in this game, but there's one other neat twist that I love, and that is that everybody has secret goals or not. <laughs> so mixed in with the monster cards and the helper cards and the land cards are secret goals. And if you get one of those, you're going to get bonus points at the end of the game. So mm -hmm. part of this game is trying to figure out if someone has a secret goal and what their secret goal is because you might want to try and thwart them. So there's a lot of, of depth layers. to this game. There's different layers, but it's relatively simple to play, uh, to learn, excuse me, and it plays in about, in about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. So it's how a many relatively, uh, players can you uh, get You can do up game? to five players, so two to five mm -hmm. players. That's excellent. That's a, I mean, you could fit the whole family. Yeah, <laughs> you could take it, depending on the size of your family. Yes, you could fit the whole family. And the uh, suggested retail price is $35. So it's, again, uh, so it's a very reasonably even, priced yeah, game. That's a good, yeah. all right. 
Okay. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Bam. Not so subtly. <laughs> and then we're going to move on to the next thing, which is one called the Llama. Now, this was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, there were three games nominated this year. The gameplay, once again, is super simple. It's from Reiner Knizia. And the object of the game is to score the lowest number of points. Okay. okay. But there are only three things you can do in the game. You can play a card, you can pick a card, or you can quit. <laughs> if you quit, you lock in the cards you have in your hand. If you play a card, you're trying to get rid of them. Because oh. the goal is to score the lowest number of points, obviously getting rid of all your cards is the best way mm -hmm. to do that. The catch is that there are llamas in the game as well. These llamas, so they're so silly and they're so cute, but they are bad because they're worth 10 points. Oh, no. So you want to get rid of those llamas. So you're building up the mountain. A one can be played. Let's pretend a one's down there. Then I could either play a one. Or a two. You can play the card that's shown mm -hmm. or one higher. That's okay. what you do if you want to play. Once you get six, that's the top of the mountain. And that's where the llamas roam. So <laughs> you can play a llama on top of the six. Oh, you man. can also play a one on top of the llamas. That's how you reset and get back down to the bottom of the mountain. Ah, okay. okay. There's one other little twist. Um, at the end of the round, you score the number of points you have left in your hand after all the other players go out. And uh, you use these chips to keep score. The catch is that the whites are worth one. The blacks are worth ten. And um, if you manage to play all of your cards on a future round, you actually get to give back one of your chips. So if you had the choice, again, the goal is to play the, get the lowest to score. Which chip would you get back, a black one or a white one? Blacks are 10, whites are 1. Uh, the black one. The black one, exactly. Yeah. So there are actually points in the game where if you only have 8 points, mm -hmm. you might actually want to not go out, take a couple extra points to get to 10, trade them in for that black chip, and then, ah. and then, and then get rid of your black chip if you go out. So there's this little wrinkle. It goes just away as the game goes on. Just a little extra layer of strategy. <laughs> and this game, once again, super simple to teach. Mm -hmm. Lots of strategy, lots of layers. And I think that's why it was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres this year. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. That one's Llama. Next one is Saboteur. <coughs> now, many people are already familiar with our existing Saboteur line. We've got Saboteur, we've got Saboteur 2, which is an expansion pack, and Saboteur the Duel. We now also have the first ever board game version uh -oh. of Saboteur. I'll point it over there so you can <laughs> see it as well. So for those of you who are familiar with Saboteur, um, there are only a couple of differences in this, but there's enough there to satisfy the existing Saboteur players. So they're, mm -hmm. they're interested and they've kind of got the dynamic of how it works. But at the same time, um, there's enough difference in there that it's for somebody that knows the game, um, it's, com it's different enough. Um, there's there. So I'm going to highlight the differences because Saboteur is a fairly well-known title. Just as a simple reminder, the object of the game is to create an unbroken path from the starting point all the way to the mines. Whichever team does that collects the most gold wins. That's how the, the card game works. What we add here is teams. So you're actually working as a team. Awesome. Um, in this game, in the original game, the Saboteur is actually trying to uh, thwart all the other players. Mm -hmm. In this game, each team has its own Saboteur. So the saboteur on my team is actively helping the other team. But those roles aren't revealed. So mm -hmm. you spend a good portion of the game trying to figure out, is Gretchen the saboteur? <laughs> right? Is she the so saboteur? Do I have to watch her really carefully, or is she my teammate? So how does that work with wind conditions? Um, with wind conditions? Yeah. So well, what happens, yes, you say what happens, what happens is at the end of the game, the sab in, in the original game, if the saboteur blocks the miners, the saboteur mm -hmm. wins. In this game, the saboteur on my team actually scores with the other team. Okay, so if the other team collects nine pieces of, of gold, let's uh -huh. say, and there are three players, we'd split that up mm -hmm. equally between the two players there plus the one saboteur on my team. The other little twist is that there's a new kind of saboteur as well. It's a selfish dwarf who's only out for him or herself. So mm -hmm. there are these clouded incentives mm -hmm. as you try and figure out who's doing what and what's going on. The other neat twist here is we've added movement to it. So mm -hmm. it's not just about building an unbroken path. You actually then have to move your players along that path as you go. And that means you can focus ahead. In, this, in the original game, you have to get an unbroken path. In mm -hmm. this one, you don't need an unbroken path. You just need to get your miners there fastest to collect the gold. And how many people do you need to play this game? You can play this with three. Three? Three, and uh, it goes up to nine players. Awesome. Okay. On to the next. This is my new favorite go-to game. It's called What the Heck. It's a famous game in Germany. It's been around for about 30 years. Brand new here in the U.S. In Germany, for those of you who are paying attention, it's called Holes de Geier. Mm -hmm. Holes de Geier roughly translates to What the Heck. And um, the game is so simple and so clever and so cool and so interesting. We start with the exact same deck. So let's say you were going to be blue. You have numbers ah. 1 through 15. I will be green. I have those same numbers 1 through 15. And then there's one more deck of cards that has 
positive numbers on it, hmm. like this. Yep. And in, back in the red, negative numbers, like that. So I'm going to shuffle these up. Mm -hmm. You can leave yours as they are. I flip over a card. Let's pretend I put the plus one, okay? Mm -hmm. So we then pick a card from our hand and put it face down in front of us. We're trying to get the most points, okay? Uh -huh. So if you wanted to take that plus one, you'd put down a higher card. But these numbers range all the way up to plus 10. So you don't want to use your highest card on that, right? Yeah. So we put our car f a card face down in front of us. We reveal them at the same time. Whoever played the highest card takes that point. If it's a negative number, whoever played the lowest card takes that point. Mm -hmm. There's only one other rule, and that is if we tie, we cancel each other out. In a two-player game, we flip over another card and keep going. In a three-, four-, or five-player game, the next highest card takes it. All right. Those are all the rules. It's kind of like a sort of a rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to try yeah. and get inside of your head <laughs> and figure out what you're thinking and what you're going to play. It's a super fun game. plays in about 10 or 15 minutes. The cool other thing is that as you play multiple rounds, as everybody mm -hmm. will want to, you have to change your strategy every time because I will <laughs> learn how you on. play. Yes. And you'll learn how I play, so I've got to change everything up for the <laughs> next round. That's awesome. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Next one to talk about is called Xcode. Uh, Xcode is a cooperative game. I hate cooperative games. <laughs> I will just say that at the outset. It's they're a snooze. But this one is actually pretty cool. And the reason is that we are going to work together as a team to try and cover every space on the board. This is a keypad. So the backstory is that these hackers have hacked into the world's computer systems. They're down. We have we have to save them. We have to enter a code into this keypad. And the way we do that is by collecting three of a kind with the cards that are in this box. Okay. okay. The catch is we have to cover all 12 spaces. We only have three minutes to do it. And oh no. that's why this is a cooperative <laughs> game that is much more stressful and much more exciting and much more frenetic and much more interesting than your average cooperative game. So as we play, we're going to be trading cards back and forth. There are rules on how we can trade and how we can't trade. It's super simple. Some cards can trade this way. Some cards can trade that way. And we're going to be calling out what we need and shouting out what we need as we play because we only have three minutes to do it. There are 10 different levels in this game. So if oh. we crack the first code, we then go on to the second code, the third code, the fourth code. Then we get a second box that has more secret cards and secret powers in there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what's in there? Uh, sorry, I can't tell you. It's a secret. <laughs> um, and then number three, this has levels eight, nine, and ten. So there are ten different missions in the game. Mm -hmm. Each one gets more challenging than the last. And they all use the same basic mechanic of us working together, three minutes to crack the code, trading cards back and forth, shouting out That's what we have. So it brings people together. It's super fun. Awesome. Okay. Got time for two more. I'm not going to say much about them because most people know them already. This yeah. one's called No Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a game that's been around for many, many years. The only thing that we have done to change this game is two things. We put it in a, well, that's three. We put it in a bigger <laughs> box. But we had to put it in a bigger box because we made the cards bigger. Ooh. The cards are thicker. And we also increased the quality of the chips. This is a game where you're holding these chips in your hand as you play. Mm -hmm. Now they're actually Ooh. these nice little Tokeny smooth and things. tokeny. Yeah, like little river rocks. Smooth. Yeah, exactly. They feel like river rocks. Exactly. So because of that, we had to increase the size of the box. Oh, there was one more thing we did. We lowered the price. <laughs> so this used to be uh, retailing at about sixteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. It now retails for nine ninety nine. Awesome. And the last one is called Take Five. This is uh, another game by Wolfgang Kramer. We have a couple others in our line. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who have been looking for Zex Nimt, which mm -hmm. is another famous German game. It's been out in the market since 1994. I may get that wrong, but I'm close. <laughs> uh, this is the original game in the U.S., Take Five. Uh, we have added a whole other game called Take a Number, which is called X Nimt in German. And we again lowered the price. So you get two full games. This used to retail also at $16.99, now for $12.99. Wow. There you go. How'd that we do? Like a speed run. That was it. It was like <laughs> speed dating, wasn't it? <laughs> Went through everything. Also, these. thank you so much for coming out and showing us all of these games. My pleasure. Um, is there a, a website with Amigo that we could go to to find out more about them? www.amigo.games. No, dot .com at the end, just dot dot .games. Dot .games. Yeah, exactly. remember that, guys. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again for coming out. And if you uh, would like to get any of these games, you can go to your friendly local game store to find out more.